the fun time started, I'd laugh until I cried. He's dynamite in those four ply diapers. He's my kind of guy. Well, there goes Max on a big time mission. Will he lose or win? Yes, it all depends on the four ply diaper, and that saves a kid. He's tops. I mean, terrific. I don't know another. TV under here. Hey, which one of you ate the last of the popcorn? <gasps> oh, Spencer, if we don't stop that creepy crawly ghost, he'll spread his vicious blood curdling horror across the world. What's the matter, Ursula? You a scaredy cat? <laughs> doing my job, he would have been in bed three hours ago. Ready, set, go! And FX is out in front with Max springing up the rear. Max seems to be holding his own now. I'm winning! I'm winning! <laughs> Max, I think we have a problem here. Whoa! Watch out, Spencer. The ghost could be anywhere. Ooh. This looks serious, Max. Does it hate our sex? I can't understand how this happened. I can't stop talking like this. I want a rematch. This ought to do it. A rematch, a rematch, a re... Won't it be rather inconvenient spending the rest of your life holding FX's snout like that? No problem. He can hold his own. Right, FX? No! That movie was too scary. Oh! Yay! It's a ghost! Zoe, why aren't you asleep? Because there's a ghost in the house, and he's after me. That's enough, young lady. I'll quit stalling and get into bed. Now, I don't want to hear another peep out of you. I hope this fixes you, FX. No, it sounds like you woke in your baby brother. Now get to sleep. Did it work? Testing one, two, three. 
I still burn funny. Now get to sleep. Uh oh. Gotta hide you, FX. Hey, B, you look great as is. Thanks, Max. Maybe I should go to pieces more often. Good. He's still asleep. Phew! That was close. It's about time. Before... Oh, my word. I've always said FX had his ups and downs. What am I afraid of? I can take care of any old ghost by myself. Not again. What was that? I think I heard Zoe. Come on, Effects. Just hold your breath till she leaves. It's up to me. All right, Ghost. I'm going to sweat you back into ectoplasm. Ghost? Max, Max! There was a ghost in here. Where'd it go? Go, go, go. Don't worry, Max. Leave everything to me. You'll be safe as long as Zoe's on patrol. I know the ghost is still in here. I can feel it. Go, go, goo, goo. Max, if you think I'm going to change you, forget it. You stay here. I'm going to go set some ghost traps. Don't I have enough troubles without worrying about my goofy sister? Hey, what about me? Lucky for FX, I was in the Space Scouts. I've got another plan. I just know I'm going to regret asking this. What is it, Max? We take FX back to Twinkle Twinkle so they can fix it. I'll show that ghost who's boss around here. Do you think it's wise to leave now with your sister ghost-busting? No problem, A.B. If she wants a ghost, we'll give her a ghost. That's not what I meant, Max. Spooker FX. Rock it and roll! You have. Hi, Daddy. Twinkle, twinkle, here we come. Effect! Look who's here! Mommy, Dad! Do I'm ready for a change of pace. How about you? Here it is. Ready, man. It's FX and his two friends. Come in, guys. Son, my, how your snout has grown. Am I glad to see you? <gasps> What's this? What has happened to our son? The poor boy unraveled right before our eyes. We tried to fix him, but we couldn't. 
Oh, no. This has only happened once before to my great-grandfather, XL. But we finally got him pulled together. Great! Then you know how to fix it? We don't, but we know someone who does. Here, take this. Dr. Fiddle Faddle is the only doctor that can cure FX, but he doesn't make planet calls. He's all the way on the other side of the universe. No problem. Max, are you sure? Do you even know where the other side of the universe is? Uh, I just happen to have a map right here. Here we are, and here is Dr. Fiddle Faddle's. What's this planet? That's where the Sleepy Deeps dwell. They sleep away most of their lives and are mean and cranky if awakened. So be careful. Don't worry. We'll be on our guide. <gasps> Poor FX. Do you think Dr. Fiddle Faddle can fix him? Uh, did I say Dr. Fiddle Faddle? Yeah, I meant Dr. Faddle Fiddle. Oh, no! We're having some fun now! Right, A.B.? Shouldn't we be keeping our eyes on the road, Max? Watch out! Whoa! Is it wise to be driving so recklessly? No backseat astral navigator. <laughs> Just our luck, a traffic jam. I have an idea. Calling all cars, calling all cars. This is the All in the Sky Traffic Reporter this best way update. To avoid a three rocket power up on Milky Way Road, get off the 101 and take big zippers drive. Phew, looks like smooth sailing from here. It's time for Galactic Overdrive. This is where we've got to be careful, Max. We're in the sleepy deeps quiet zone. Shh. FX, AB, me and the subsonic study sciences. Hit it, AB. Roll, roll, roll your rocket gently into space. space. Haven't you hatched that thing yet? I want to go to bed. Keep it quiet down there. Some of us are trying to sleep. Hey, don't be so cranky. Don't let him upset you, dear. This is going to be our lucky night. <gasps> I see a shooting star. Okay, guys, relax. We're out of the quiet zone. Oh, I couldn't have rode one more verse of that song. My arms feel like they're made of rubber. That's because they are FX. Next stop, Dr. Fiddle Fiddles. It's Armstrong. We'll take the real entrance. Hospitals always make me so nervous. Relax. Everything seems perfectly calm around here. <laughs> Doctor, doctor, is there a doctor in the house? Wait a minute, I'm a doctor. Patience, patience. I have no patience. Dr. Fiddle Fiddle, well, we're here. Oh, you certainly are. Or at least more of you than my last patient. I know your problem, Shorty. You need a heart. I'm not the patient. Shame on you for trying to confuse me. This is the patient. <laughs> and now, let's see. I prescribed some courage for you. And I'd say you need a brain. Dr. Fiddle Faddle, FX is the one who's sick. Well, why didn't you say so? I'm a doctor, not a mind reader, you know. Obviously, for that, you'd need a mind. Zip, zap, zooey. You're cured. No, I'm kidding. Let me just get a gurney. You sit right there, hose nose. Out of the way, patient coming through. 
Dr. Fiddlefaddle, has our baby Sleepy Deep hatched yet? Uh, baby? Uh, oh, yeah, baby. Uh, she just quacked out. Uh, what do you think? <gasps> You've got to be kidding. She doesn't even look like us. I'm not your baby. I'm not even a girl. Oh, and that voice is awful. Well, she's yours, all right. And I should know, I, I just delivered her. And I don't take returns. Where's that can you imagine those sleepy deeps wanted to retain their baby just because it didn't look like them and talk funny? And now, where were we, and what's your problem? Doctor, I'm perfectly well. Well, I'm better at this job than I thought. How will you be paying for this? Insurance? Stamps? Plastic? Huh? Uh, don't tell me you left home without it. Doctor, you're wacko. No, no, I'm faddle. Dr. Wacko doesn't work here anymore. What have you done with our friend FX? Oh, the little green squite? I sent him home with his parents. You what? I said I sent him home. Better snare that drum, pal. Now beat it. Oh, patience, patience. What could have happened to FX? <laughs> And Dr. Fiddlefaddle was talking about some parents who didn't like the way their baby talked. <gasps> they were switched! We better exchange it for FX before it's too late. I'm not your baby. Let me go! Quiet down there! I don't know why this kid won't pipe down. I want a grown room! That's it, buddy. I've had it. I can make you be quiet, you know. Oh, yeah? You and who else? I've heard all day, Max. Sleep tight, guys. Oh, bad at him, Max. Well, after a good night's sleep, I bet you're ready for a full day at the park.
On Sunday, we present a wonderful afternoon of children's viewing from around the world. From an Eskimo legend, the woman who raised a bear as her son, to the animated special Prince Cinders. Join us for UNICEF's International Children's Day of Broadcasting, Sunday from 12 o'clock. Next, Square One TV. said to me, I don't know what went wrong. It went OK on the rehearsal. <laughs> Gosh, folks, this is not a rehearsal. This is the real thing. And we want your real math pledges. Matter of fact, some have been coming in today. I want to tell you about them. They're really fabulous. Here's a guy in Huntsville, Alabama. Now, he pledged the use of his favorite number, one Google. That's 100th power of 10. That's one followed by 100 zeros. Great one. Burn Stump, Montana, pledged a set of metric rulers, good for measuring lengths in millimeters, centimeters, up to two meters long. This is fabulous. Thanks for that one, guys. Resume Speed Oklahoma just pledged a complete set of large numbers, including billions and millions. We can use those to record our pledges. Right this way, folks. Now, Great Barrington, Massachusetts. There's a place I love. They pledge a multiplication with products up to 20 times 20. Here you go, right this way, folks. <laughs> I love the way you guys move. It's just great. Yeah. Vicksburg, Michigan. They pledge a set of common fractions, halves, thirds, fourths, even six. Listen, folks, I can't overemphasize the importance of mathematics, even though I, I, I seem to be. Uh, uh, pardon me. Who do I look like? Gerald Ford? No, no, I'm sorry. I excuse me. Oh, what happened? Did your tum tum make a bloober? No, I, actually, I couldn't help but notice that uh, you have a bag of golf clubs and a camel. You are very observant. W why? Well, I carry the golf clubs because I'm on the way to a golf tournament. Oh. And the camel? How do you use the camel in the golf game? In case I hit into a very big sand trap. Come along, Arnold. You know, there's a lot of numbers involved in the game of golf. Oh, oh see? Oh, Went from a four to a three. Must have been a discount tournament. <laughs> Did you see a golfer go through here? Oh, yeah. As a matter of fact, he went that away. Is that his golf ball? Yes, it is. Oh, and what was that shattering glass sound I heard? My contact lens. Are you going to sue him? Nah, I just want to talk to him about club selection for a second shot. Bummer. Well, listen, folks, we got to get back to our pledge show. You know, it is time now for one of the great moments of our mathathon. It is my distinct honor and privilege, well, maybe not honor, to present two of Math's favorite exponents, Jeanette Nelson and Eddie McDonald, posing the eternal musical question, why do I love math? mission is to eat only multiples of four. When you encounter a number, you will have until the count of three to make your decision. And beware the unmerciful Mr. Glitch. I'll he will eat up. you if you are wrong. Tee! Math man, math man, math man, math man. Looks good. 
The answers to the questions come from you, kids at schools all over the country. Hi, everybody. I'm Reggie Cathy, and this is Piece of the Pie. And now let's meet the host of our show, Mr. Chris Franco. Oh, thank you, Reggie. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We've got a terrific game plan for you. We have some wonderfully enthusiastic contestants. Let's meet them right now. On the red team, we have Desiree Jones. Danny Guadagnoli and their team captain, Christy Maloney. Let's have a round of applause for the red team. Good luck to you, red team. Good luck. You'll be playing against the blue team, who are Chris Tripalis, Teresa Trinder, and their team captain, Wesley Campbell. Let's hear it for the blue team. We'll be playing on Piece of the Pie. Team captains, join me down here at the buzzer. And Reggie, will you describe today's survey to the kids at home, please? Gladly, Chris. We ask kids at Fort Kent Elementary School in Fort Kent, Maine, to name their least favorite vegetable. They gave us eight different answers. See if you can pick their top five answers on today's piece of the pie. Thanks, Reg. Well, you kids at home have heard today's survey question. Team captains, get your hands over the buzzer, because now you'll hear today's survey question. Name your least favorite vegetable. We go to Wesley on the blue team. Broccoli. Broccoli. And that is good for 23% of the pie. And we go over to Chrissy on the red team. Spinach. Spinach. That is the best possible answer. 25 percentage points of the pie, which means the red team goes next. They have the bigger piece of the pie. Team captain for the seat. And we go over here to Danny Guaragnoli. Hi, Danny. Uh, do you like vegetables? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Thought about the question? What do, you, what do you say? What do you think the least favorite vegetable would be? Uh, beans. Beans. More specific, what kind of beans? Um, string beans. String beans. Oh, I'm sorry. We did, mm, that was not quite the answer we wanted to. We go over to the blue team, to Teresa Trinder. Hi, Teresa. Hi. What do you say, least favorite vegetable? Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts? Ooh, I know I hate them. Let's go over to Desiree Jones. Hi, Desiree. Hi. <clears throat> What's your least favorite vegetable? Carrots. Carrots? That is a good answer for 90 percentage points, which means the red team now has 44 percent. Remember, you need more than 50 percent over half. You're very, very close. We go over to Chris on the blue team. Hi, Chris. OK, we're looking for at least favorite vegetable, Chris. Cauliflower. Cauliflower. Oh, unfortunately, I guess the kids like cauliflower. We go back to the team captain now, Chris. You got 44 percentage points. This could be the winning answer. What do you say? Um, huddle. Huddle. OK, what do you say, Christy? Chick chickpeas. Chickpeas. <coughs> Unfortunately, that was not the right answer. We go over to the blue team. You've got another chance, blue team. We're looking for the least favorite vegetable. And we go back to Wesley. Mm. You have to do it within the time before the buzzer rings. OK, that little bell means that this is the final round. We're going to give each team one more time. We go to the red team. They are so close. What do you say, red team? We are going to Danny. Um, say. OK, this is for the last answer. Blue team, Teresa. Lima beans. Lima beans. That is a good answer for 13 points, which gives the blue team 36 points, but the red team with 44% of the pie, the bigger piece of the pie, wins the game. Congratulations, red team. 
The last remaining answer was worth 20% of the pie. That was keys, but nevertheless, the red team wins. You get a chance to play the lightning round and win an additional prize. Danny, join me on stage here. Desiree, go with Reggie Cathy to our soundproof booth while we talk to your teammate here. Hi, Danny. Hi. Okay, what we are going to do is we are going to ask you three survey questions. Now, you will win points based on the number of kids that give the same answer as you gave, all right? You're going to have uh, 15 seconds to answer three survey questions. Okay, are you ready? Okay, here we go. Name one of five senses. Uh, hearing. An animal with fur. Uh, bear. Name something you find in a desk drawer. Um, pencils. Pencils. Okay, Danny, I think you came up with some terrific answers. We are looking on this for a goal of 100 points, which means you and your teammate have to come up with 100 total points. Let's see how they did. We asked you to name one of five senses. You said hearing. That's good for 13 points. An animal with fur. You said bear. That's good for another 12 points. Something in a desk drawer. You said pencil. That was the most popular answer for 40 points. That gives you a total of 65, more than half. Your teammate needs to come up with 35 more. You did a terrific job. Have a seat, Danny. Okay, come on in, Desiree. Join me right here. We are going to ask you the same three questions we asked Danny. You can't repeat any of the answers he gave. We're looking for a total of 100 points. He came up with 65, more than half, so you could win the lightning round if you give some great answers. You're going to have 20 seconds to answer the three questions. Are you ready, Desiree? Yes. Here we go. Name one of five senses. Hearing. Already been taken. Another one of five senses. Sight. An animal with fur. Rabbit. Something you find in a desk drawer. Pen. Pen. This could be it. Let's see how we did. You only need 35 to win. We asked you, Desiree, to name one of the five senses. You said sight. That was the best possible answer for 31 points. That gave you 96. You only need four more to win. An animal with fur. You answered rabbit. That was good for 24 points. That gives you 120. You're over the top. You win the lightning round for your team. Congratulations, Red Team. You win the whole thing. Kitten you got all the answers right. Our winners, the Red Team, will each receive this square one jacket and the sound machine. And for winning the lightning round, they'll each get the waterproof square one wristwatch. Our runners-up, the blue team, will take home the Square One wristwatch and Zorts, the note holder from another world. Ooh, thanks a lot, Reggie. Congratulations. That was a very good game. You guys came with some terrific answers. Thanks so much for joining us on Piece of the Pie. Let's all shake hands and tell that we had a terrific time on Piece of the Pie. Thank you so much. Goodbye, everybody. Say goodbye. Bye. The story you are about to see is a fib, but it's short. The names are made up, but the problems are real. It was Tuesday, 4.47 p.m., and the city's workforce was flattened. New Yorkers who rode the subway to work were being knocked down when they got to street level by people who jogged to work, and then run over by people who roller skated or bicycled to work. I was working the day watch out of MathNet. My partner is George Frankly. The captain is Joe Greco. My name is Monday. I'm a mathematician. We were working on a case of monumental importance, and to refill our nearly empty think tanks, we decided to look at earlier scenes from the story. First, George and I were told that people in our government have developed a way to control weather throughout the world. And then we learned that the airplane, a one-of-a-kind model called the Z-13, it's been plane napped. And then we learned that a no longer functioning cooling system will ignite the fuel. The result is kaboom! kaboom. And when we asked how long before this explosion would take place, putting our citizenry in jeopardy, we were told... 36 hours. We couldn't find the plane or the people who were responsible for the theft, although we did learn their identity. Arms dealers known as cartel, the conspiracy of anarchists, robbers, tough guys, evildoers, and loonies, and they were going to sell it to the highest bidding country. That country turned out to be an emerging fourth world nation named Doodly Doo. They bought it for $10 billion. I hope they can stop payment on the check because it's 3 p.m. and in three hours and seven minutes there won't be any SWI. The sand was slipping through the hourglass and we hit one dead end after another. Nothing, Kate. There's no sign of the Z-13. The what? Never mind, Mr. Sludge. You were our last best hope. 
Not much time left, Kate. Not many ideas left either. Perhaps you should try to evacuate the city. There are seven million people here. You might save some lives. More lives might be taken by the panic. Besides, we don't know where the explosion will occur. We could drive people right into the center of it. I wonder when Doodly Doo is supposed to take possession of the Z-13. So do I, Mr. G. And so do I. Washington, D.C. information. Can you give me the number of the embassy of Doodly Doo? You have two numbers, but one is not in service. Can you give me a good doodly do? Thanks. Calling doodly do? Yes, George. They must be in contact with cartel. Maybe we can. Hello. May I speak with the ambassador, please? Oh, could you tell me where he's staying? Thank you. What? The ambassador and his entourage are in New York City. Where are they staying? The Umpire Hotel. Know where it is? Yeah, it's in the 60s. It's run by Cornell Hotel School Dropouts. Let's pay a visit. We've still got about an hour. Hey, wait for me! It was a long shot, no question about it. But we had to give it a try. We located the ambassador. He was with the potentate of Doodly Doo, his royal majesty, and one of his wives. We explained our plight, including the immediate danger of the situation. The Doodly Dooers were extremely cooperative. They said Cartel was sending a car to pick them up and make the exchange. The money for the weather. We hit upon a plan, and they agreed. Posing as the potentate, the potentate tet, and the aide-de-camp, George Spiro and I waited for the limo cartel was sending to pick up the entourage. We were given a quick rundown of the cultural idiosyncrasies of Doodly Doo and hoped we could pull it off. I gotta tell you, Kate, I feel pretty silly. You look like a real potentate to me, George. I feel like a, a bitch friend. George, here they come. They explained that secrecy had to be maintained, and they gently blindfolded us. We rode in silence for a few minutes, then got out of the car and were led up a set of stairs and into a room where we took off the blinders. I'm Ronald Crum of Cartel. Please be seated and uh, accept my apologies for having to blindfold you. We understand, Mr. Crum. As we say in my country, when a camel is great with spheroid, it is...
100% of Square One TV is a production of the Children's Television Workshop.